Three. Aloha and welcome, ev welcome everyone to what we really had a change in Christ. My name is Alana Sagasa and I join our guest pastor, Makua Gleams, and our worship team in leading today's service. We are happy you have joined us for worship, whether you're here in person or joining us via online. Let's turn to your neighbor and meet them with a warm look. For those watching online, give us a way of worship. We would like to thank Shnosa Gaksa for the beautiful altar flowers and celebration of her birthday. Now let's prepare our hearts for worship as we light the candles, open the Bible, and listen to the gathering music by Adam and Moniz. Please join me in 
leading our call to worship. The words can be found in your bullets and are on the screen. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Let us pray with our prayer of invocation and unison, followed by the Lord's prayer. Good morning, church family. We welcome you. And as our call to worship says that for those that are allowed to ascend to the hill, stand in open faces. It is those people who have clean hands and a pure heart. And it is with the heart that we make that our cry to the Lord. The Lord, we want, we want to be in your presence. We want to present our body as a living sacrifice to
might have been surprised to know that even Jesus' disciples argued this way. Um, one day, the disciples were walking along the road with Jesus, and they began arguing amongst themselves. Jesus overheard them, and when they, and when they got there, to the place where they were going, he asked, What were you arguing, arguing about on the road? The disciples suddenly got very quiet, and they were embarrassed, because they had been arguing about which of them was the greatest. Jesus sat down and called his disciples to him. If anyone wants to be first, he said, he must be very last and be the servant of everybody else. Now that wasn't exactly what his disciples wanted to hear. They were hoping to hear that Jesus was saying that they were going to have a position of great importance in his kingdom. Instead, Jesus called a little child over to him and took the child in his arms. Anyone who welcomes one of these little children also welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me also welcomes the one who sent me. If I were to ask you who is the greatest person who could have ever lived, what would your answer be? Would you name a famous athlete, a movie star, a world leader? I think we would all agree that Jesus Christ was the greatest person who ever The key to greatness. The key to greatness is to have a servant's heart, a heart like Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us a servant's heart, a heart like you, like you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. close your eyes right now. God, I just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, for this precious friend. The word of God says that you send forth the word and you heal them. Your word will not return back unto us void. Father, right now, wherever he may be, whatever situation, whatever circumstance, in the mighty name of Jesus, we command life, we command healing, we command wholeness right now. God, we thank you that you send forth your angels and you make them ministers of flames of fire. You send those who will inherit salvation. God, we thank you that you would save him, heal him, deliver him right now. Anthony and his friends and the whole entire household and everyone within his reach, his entire community. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come into agreement. God, we touch right now, whatever it is that needs to be made whole and complete. And we thank you, whatever we lay our hands upon will be healed and will prosper. Father, we bless him in the mighty name of Jesus. Exodus 19, verse 5 through 6. This is the word of God. 
but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who you called out of darkness into his marvelous light. First Peter 2, verse 9. This is the good news. Close your eyes, put your head on your heart. Come, Holy Spirit, like that of a mighty rushing wind this morning. Father, I pray that you would disturb the hearts of your people. Provoke us to a life of hunger, a life of thirst. God, I thank you. I call forth out of their belly a river of living water. As Jesus spoke concerning John 7 30, he said, Out from your heart shall flow a river of living water. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, right now, wherever there is barren places, wherever there is dry places, wherever there is stagnancy, Lord, in the name of Jesus, let a river of living water spring up out of them right now in the name of Jesus to bring life, to bring healing, and to bring wholeness. And God, I thank you this morning that you would break open the outer shell of our hearts, oh Jesus, and that the oil from heaven would come in like honey and that you would saturate us, and that you would permeate us, God, and that you would make us to become more like Jesus. Father, we thank you that today that heaven will touch down, that a radical encounter would meet your people here, and that you would wake them up, oh God, from their sleep, and that they would rise up in the last days. God, because your word declares you will pour your spirit out, upon all flesh and blood, and the young and old shall prophesy, and dream dreams, and have visions. God, I thank you that you have not forgotten your people. You have not forgotten this place. But God, I thank you for a visitation to move in and to sweep across the hearts of everybody that is here this morning. Come, Holy Spirit, and increase on the inside of us. Do what it is that you want to do. Speak what it is that you want to speak. God, we thank you that you cause us to have a deep, lovesick longing for you. That everything that we would want, the only thing that we would desire, the only thing that we would ask for is your face, is to see you face to face. That we would behold the image and the glory of God and be transformed from one degree of glory to another degree of glory. God, I thank you today. The eyes of their heart will be open and their understanding would be enlightened and they will see the hope in which they are called to and they will walk after the call of Jesus. God, I thank you for radical sons and daughters this morning that you would raise them up, God, that you would shake what must be shaken, strip what must be stripped, take what must be taken. God, we thank you. We don't want nothing else in this world but only you, Jesus. That we would be left naked before you, bare in your eyes, because all we want is you and only you and nothing else. I thank you for your people, that they would hunger for the very genuineness and presence of the living God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we all said. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. Listen, are you excited to be in the house of God this morning? Just say, I'm excited. Are you excited to be here? Just say, I'm excited to be here. Listen, I want to tell you, right? Wherever a believer obeys the commands of the king, there the kingdom of God reigns. Oh, come on, Jesus. Right? And if we want to be a people who says the kingdom of God is here in Wailua, or the kingdom of God is there in Mililani, or the kingdom of God is all around our islands, let me tell you that we have to be a people who is obedient to the commands of the king. Because when a king decrees a command and we go out and fulfill it, guess what? That's where the kingdom reigns. Everybody say this with me. The kingdom of God reigns. Let's say this. The kingdom of God reigns here. Now say this, I'm a believer believer. that obeys obeys. the commands of the king. king. So say this to me, where I go, go, the kingdom goes. goes. When I show up, up, the kingdom shows up. up. Now let me ask you a question, is it true? When you show up, does the kingdom of God reign? 
When you walk into an area, when you go into your family, when you go to school, when you go into your business, when you go into your workplace, wherever it is that the soles of your feet tread, in Walmart, in Tamuras, in Mugs, wherever you go, does the kingdom of God reign? Because I want to tell you that God wants to break out of the walls. God was contained in the old in a box. But now that the Spirit of God has been poured out, guess what? He lives in you. And so the very Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God, is dwelling in mere mortal bodies. And wherever you go as a vessel carrying the kingdom of God, let me tell you, signs, miracles, and wonders begin to take place. Does anybody want to see signs and miracles and wonders go out of their life? Just wait at me. Some of you here. Some of you here. Some of you here. Can I tell you something? And the Bible says this in Matthew 28, 19. It says, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Can anybody tell me in there where it says, go into all the world and make converts of all nations? Listen, you're not going to find it in there. But I want to tell you something, there's so much more because in westernized Christianity we're being taught an American gospel. And this American gospel is saying we can do whatever we want to do and live however we want to live and God's going to give us grace and it's going to be okay because I hold a golden ticket waiting to get to heaven. Friends, I want to tell you that's a lie. Because heaven now lives only inside of you. And Jesus said the kingdom of God is not on your left or your right. The kingdom of God is not what you eat. The kingdom of God is not what you do. The kingdom of God is within you. Oh, come on, Jesus. And so wherever you go, out of your heart shall flow a river of living water. Everybody say this with me. Out of my heart shall flow a river of living water. You see, you are to be like this fire hydrant that is constantly on. And when you turn that bad boy on, let me tell you something. If you hook that hose up and there's a fire, that fire is about to be extinguished. You are a fire hydrant. But nobody told you that because you forgot what is on the inside of you. The greatness of God is living within you. We have to learn how to harness the fullness of God that's dwelling within us. You need to possess the Spirit of God. Everybody say this. I need to possess the Spirit of God. You need to tap in. Say, I need to tap in. Because right now, everybody is a fire hydrant. But they have not tapped into their potential. And until you knock that thing open, then its potential can go forth. And right now you're walking around like a seed. But the seed doesn't just stay a seed forever. It bears a tree of life. My goodness. Can I tell you something? That we are called to answer the call of Jesus. But right now, there is this thing that's being misrepresented all across the globe because of westernized Christianity. You want to know what it is? So you want to know what it is? Okay, you want to know what it is. There is this word right now, right, that everybody and their mama and their aunties call it themselves. You know what it is? Take a shot at it. Just guess. Everybody and their mama. You know what they tell, you know what they tell me that they are? Christian. Everybody say it with me. I'm a Christian. I'm going to tell you something. The last person I talked to was a Reiki master that practices spiritual healing. And you know what she told me? I'm a Christian. I said, no, you ain't. The last person I talked to that was all, all about religion and different, all kind of religions and cults. The last guy, he was also a Buddhist. And he said, you know what? I'm Christian. I said, no, you ain't. All of a sudden... Right? The Heavenly Father, the Latter-day Saints, the Mormons are, I'm a Christian. No, you ain't. And everybody is coming and saying, I'm professing that they're Christian. Can I tell you what Christian is? Anybody want to know? They were first given that name in Antioch, in the book of Acts. Christ-like one, a little anointed one who is like Jesus. Right? But can I tell you that a Christian means one that is a notch above the rest. You don't look like the world. You don't talk like the world. You don't, you don't do the things that the world is doing. You're separate from the world. You are to be a holy people, chosen, set apart, called by His name. Is there anybody like that with me this morning? Anybody a chosen generation here? Anybody that is set apart? 
Anybody that is a treasured possession? My God. Woo! I mean, we, we read it earlier. Was it just something you repeat off of the board? That was 1 Peter. Coming out of Exodus, coming out of Leviticus. Be holy as I'm holy. You are a special people. You're not to go to the rest. You're to look. Moses said this. Make a distinguish. Make a distinction between us and all the other people in the face of the earth. Because God, if you don't go with us, I don't want to go. God, if you don't send us, I don't want to go. Make us different. Your presence has to be within us. Who carries the presence of God here? Just wait a minute. Well, some of you. Some of you. The word Christian is only mentioned three times in the Bible. And my mission is to redeem Christianity. How so? Because we have forgot something so very important. Everybody say disciple. The word disciple is mentioned 250 times in the Bible. 250 times in the text. A disciple. A disciple of Jesus. A disciple of the Lord. A disciple is an imitator of Christ. Everybody say imitator of Christ. Imitator of Christ. Paul says imitate me as I imitate him. Follow me as I follow him. Ephesians 5 verse says be ye imitators of Christ. A disciple is one who renounces the world. I don't know if you're ready for this. You okay? <laughs> Wait at me. You okay? Because I'm going to tell you something and there's a price to pay as a disciple. Because you're sitting down wondering, who am I? What am I? I thought I was a Christian. Okay, cool. But are you a disciple? I want to tell you what they have to do to follow Jesus. Renounce their family. Renounce their friends. Renounce their occupation. Renounce their jobs. Renounce their career. Renounce everything. Because they, bet they wanted to better obey God by following the text. The scriptures, the word. They want to walk in obedience towards God. They said these things are holding us back. We must prioritize Christ above all others. What Jesus said to Peter, come, follow me. It says immediately they dropped their nets. And it says immediately they began to follow Jesus. Christ is here this morning, reaching out to your hearts. Say, come, follow me. What will you drop? What will you leave behind? What do you prioritize more in your life? Is it Christ himself or is it the other things? He says, unless you hate your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your auntie, your uncle, unless you hate them, you cannot follow me, you're not worthy. What does that mean? That means unless you prioritize me and make me number one, if you do not do this, you're not worthy to be my disciple. These are the words of Jesus. Not the words of me. The words of Jesus. Unless you say no to the things of this world, deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow him. If you do not, you're not worthy to follow him. Jesus, throughout the text, says to people, come, follow me. Come, follow me. Come, follow me. Come, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. Woo! When Jesus calls you, he calls you to be a disciple. Everybody say this, I'm a disciple. I'm well, some of you scared. Now. <laughs> really, I'm a disciple? If you're taking notes, you need to write this down. Because the first thing about a disciple is number one, he is chosen. My God. Say this with me. I am. I am. One more time. I am. I am. Chosen. chosen. Some of y'all don't know that you're chosen. They forgot to tell you. Woo! They forgot to tell you. You see, because you're sitting here this morning saying, I don't know if I'm worthy to follow Jesus. I don't know if I can do what Jesus is telling me to do. I don't know if I can walk in obedience to his command. 
don't know if that stuff is for me. I'm not worthy. I'm not deserving. Let me show you something. If you wanted to go find somebody to study under, you have to say to them, hey, can I follow you? And that person that you wanted to train under, whether a rabbi, a teacher, a master, a coach, they'll look at you and they'll judge your potential. From the inside out, they say, you don't have what it takes. You can't follow me. And he rejects them and turns them away. There's something in the high schools that you notice when they're playing football, these scouts come out, they're looking for individuals that have what it takes. It's called potential. And if they have what it takes, they'll offer them a special scholarship, but it's not for everyone. Jesus said hard words, and when he said hard words, a lot of them left. And then he looks through the 12 and he says, what about you? And they say, where else can we go? You have the words of life. It is in you I live and move and have my being apart from you. I can do nothing. He says, my beloved, you are mine, and I'm calling you. I have chosen you. And you stop and you look and you think, why would he choose me? I'm undeserving, I'm unworthy. No, 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 no. God doesn't call the unworthy. He doesn't choose the undeserving. He only chooses those who are worthy. So when Jesus walks up to you and he says, come, follow me, he says this, you did not choose me. I chose you. My God. My God. I chose you. See, I'm chosen. chosen. And because you're chosen, you're worthy. Say, I'm worthy. And because you're chosen, you're deserving. Say, I'm deserving. And because you're chosen, you're good enough. Say, I'm good enough. You see, this morning God is stripping the lies that you have been believing all of your life. He said, I didn't know. Well, you didn't know you were a disciple. Because everybody and their mama is a Christian. Oh, sweet Jesus. You're chosen. And this morning here, the hand of God is on a few of you. The hand of God is moving upon some of you now. This morning, some of your hearts are battling within, struggling within. Who is this guy up here? I'm a disciple. I believe what the Word of God says. I've met Jesus. I've been following God for over nine years. I've been preaching the gospel all across of America, all across of our islands. I stood in crusades in Brazil. I walked the slums of South Africa. I preached in the temples of Japan. I called people to follow Jesus. And I've made disciples of all nations. Number one, you are chosen. Number two, is as a disciple, you have to prioritize something very important. Your priority is to follow him to become like him. My God. If you're taking us here, write this down. I need to follow him to become like him. Jesus said, no student is above his master, but when he is fully trained, everybody say fully trained, he will be just like him. So what am I? Well, I'm a disciple, that's training. What are you? You are a disciple, that's training. I am a student in learning. You are a student in learning. I'm ever growing, ever learning, ever walking after him, believing his word, not allowing what I experience to 
trump the truth of God's word. Because let me tell you, I experience things that are contrary to the word of God. And it hurts and I say, God, I'm going to take a stand. Because nothing is impossible for them that believe. Oh, hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. By the way, I'm born and raised in Wahiwa. I don't have a different accent or anything. I just spent time with God. I was bad at English. I was failing high school. God came into my bedroom. I got rad I had a radical encounter. I didn't know anything about anything. So Jesus stepped in my bedroom, made himself real to me, and I said, it's game on. It's game on. I'm going to follow you, give my life to you, God, and I'm going to preach the gospel for the rest of my life. I'm going to exhaust everything that's in me and preach the word of God. Woo! Is everybody okay this morning? Just wait at me. Is everybody getting any value? Are you okay? Am I boring you? Am I tiring you out? Oh, sweet Jesus. My wife's here, by the way. I've been married for about six years now. Two babies. Thank you, Jesus. We got... Um, I married my wife when she turned 18. And birthday and, and wedding at the same time. Sweet Jesus. Your priority is to become like Christ. Who wants to become more like Jesus? You want to become more like Jesus? Some of you don't know if you want to become more like Jesus. He said, how much more of Jesus can I be like? I don't even know if you're even there. <laughs> don't worry. Because we can break something open this morning so that you can step in. I want to pray for you. What is your name? Yeah. Just stand up. Just take a step. Just close your eyes. Just lift your hands. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus right now, Lord, I just loose that anointing over her life. I thank you that the hand of God is over her, that you have called her for such a time as this, that she is yours, she belongs to you. God, I thank you that though the enemy has been coming in like the flood, that you're coming in with the miraculous. God, I thank you. You are the God of angel armies and you'll fight for her. Exodus 14, 14, be still and know that he is the Lord and he will fight for you. God, I just thank you that as she's walking on the waters, though the water seems like it is picking up, God, I thank you that you walk on the waters with her. I thank you that nothing will be impossible for her. You see her. You are the God who sees. You are the God who hears. God, I just thank you that right now that the things that she's putting her hands to do very creative. God says that I've given you the ability to create wealth. God says that I've given you the ability to cause things to come into existence. Where things are starting first off in your mind, it seems like, I don't know if this is right. I don't know if this is good. But conception is more real than, a, than, than the physical things. And God says it's starting first in your mind. He's going to make you a giant slayer because right now there's things that are coming at you. But right now it's like you're like David going after Goliath. There's stones in your hand. And God says, but I have given you, it's time to sling it. It's time to slay it. And where the enemy is trying to stop you, God says, it's no longer going to stop you. Because what he meant for evil, God is turning it around for good. God says, this is your season. This is your time. Get ready. The winds of change is about to shift the trajectory of your life. There's about to be a great breakthrough. You're about to lead a triumphant victory parade. I see your voice reaching out to a generation of women calling Deborahs to rise up. There's a heart on the inside of you, very tenacious. You're, there's tenacity over you, not willing to give up, willing to endure, willing to persevere. And God says, I've been taking note of the times of labor. I've been taking note of the times of the unseen. And God wants to validate you this morning because you are a daughter in whom he loves. You are a daughter who he is well pleased. Father, Lord, I just loose that over her this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak freedom over you. Right now, where there is that anxiety, those panic attacks being broken in the mighty name of Jesus right now. We break its power. Go! In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you that you will walk in fullness, walk in complete wholeness, walk in health, and walk in healing in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Everybody okay? Are you okay? Wait a Can you, can you stand? Yes. 
Anybody know anything about the Holy Spirit? Well, he's here. Just close your eyes with your hands. God says that he delights when you journal. You're very expressive. You're very animated. But when you pen things down, it becomes a reality. God says, don't stop because the pages that are in your journal becomes the life of your notebook, becomes a life story. And every, every page that you turn, God can't wait to speak to you. And there's this two-way communication that you're going to begin to unpack. It's called hearing the voice of God because you've been seeking the voice of God, wondering how do I hear His voice? God, how can I hear you? I want to hear you more. I saw the hand of the Lord touch your ear. He says, my daughter, I'm opening your ears to hear. I'm opening your eyes to see. I'm opening up your mind to conceive. No things that anybody else knows. No thing that anybody else has seen or can see. God is opening up and putting it on the inside of you. Because you're a woman of spontaneity. You're very spontaneous. You move in the flow. But don't dismiss and don't reject these little creative ideas that are sparking from within you. There is this little voice that you always question, question to see whether if this is God or if this is just me. But in those times, those voices is actually just the voice of God whispering sweet love nothings. And the love of God is touching down on you today. Because of the things that have happened prior in the past, God says, look, all things old have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. There isn't a need to talk about any of those things because as far as the east is from the west, God forgets them and remembers them no more. And it's like all these days, it feels like you're carrying something on your shoulders like a backpack and you just can't see what it is. It's So Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I just lose that freedom over her right now. Whatever it may be, whatever life-giving virtue of God flow through her entire body now in the mighty name of Jesus. There is a revivalist on the inside of you. There is a there is a, a woman of stealth on the inside of you. Lethal arms. God has equipped you to trample over the adder, to trample over the serpent, to trample over the enemy. God says, if you will take one step, I will take two with you. And if you put your feet out and say, I will not stand against the lies and the threats of the enemy, God says, you will crush it. You are to fight for victory. You've already won. God says, what are you doing? You've already won. You already won. You already won. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just lose that over her today. I just bless your precious God in the mighty name of Jesus. And I say amen. Are you okay? Just like that. Is this okay? Sorry, I lost the time. Let me try to wrap it up. Okay, so. Are you okay? It's all right. Listen, I just want to hear what the Spirit of God is saying for you. And he's always speaking. He's always doing something. I want to tell you the type of disciple that he's actually looking for. He's looking for a disciple that loves to go fishing. Anybody here love to go fishing? I want to tell you why. Because fishermen endure sweat, blood, tears, and agony day and night, night and day. And me and JJ are always going out fishing there, so we ain't catching nothing. And we come back home and they say, you're eight hours at the beach and you didn't catch one thing? I said, man, we tried. I said, sweet Jesus, I did everything. I threw out the ego, we, we, we slide bait, we were passing out some plugs, and we didn't catch nothing all day. But you can ask JJ and I, and you can say, hey, even if you didn't catch a fish, did you ever give up? Never, God forbid. If you talk to any fisherman who loves fishing, no fisherman ever gave up fishing just because they never caught a fish. My God. 
The type of disciple that God is looking for is a fisher of men. Because they never give up, even if they don't catch anything. And he who is wise wins souls. And Jesus said, I will make you a fisher of men. And when you're going out to make disciples of all nations, you're called not to give up or not to stop fishing, even if you can't find a disciple, even if you can't make a disciple. Even if you've never seen anything happen, you keep on fishing. I'm going to try to wrap it up for a little bit. <clears throat> There's one disciple, his name is Peter. And Peter was sent out with all his disciples on the boat. And as they were out on the boat, you want to know what happens? Anybody want to know what happens? Yeah. She would pass the mic. She would pass the mic. How do you think? I don't know where I'm at. Did you keep passing the mic? Are you okay? Is this okay? As I was preaching for three hours last night, and everyone was stuck. I said, you can have everything. <clears throat> There's one thing that the Bible records that Jesus did alone, that he didn't do with his disciples. And this is huge, because as a disciple, you want to be with Jesus 24 7, seven days a week. How does he pray? How does he fast? How does he talk? How does he read the words of God? The Bible says he withdrew to a mountain. And as he was on that mountain, he looked down on the waters, and you know what he saw? He saw his disciples rowing a boat to get to the other side. But can I tell you something? The Bible explains that they weren't even a quarter of the way there, that as a matter of fact, they were rowing for eight hours. Eight hours in one place. And Jesus is looking down, watching them struggle. And then he said, oh, you know what? I'll probably go out there and meet them. Some of you right now are feeling like you're struggling. Simply because God told you to do something. God told you to go somewhere. God told you to be obedient. You say, God, I'm being obedient. But I feel like nothing is happening. And when you come to the end of yourself, this is where Jesus can show up. Woo! And when he shows up, let me tell you something. Something's about to happen. But here's what the Bible records, that he was like a wood drifting along the sea. And he was going to pass them by. But then the disciples cried out. And you know what they said? It's a what? It's a what? It's a ghost. How many Filipinos in here? Explain that to me. I'm asking you this because in my house, you know what they taught me? They say, you can't whistle at night. You can't whistle at night. Oh, you can't pop an umbrella open at night. I said, I can't pop an umbrella open in the house at night. Oh, yeah, superstition. I'm like, super what? I was a child. What do you thought Filipinos were superstitious? Let me tell you, the Jews were also superstitious. Because here in this region, the demographics was a sea, big pond like. And mountains surrounding all around it, just like our islands. But this place was known for the winds and waves to pick up. And no Jewish person would live near this area because of this word called Tohu no Tohu, the deep of the deep, the dark abyss. This is where ghosts haunt the waters. A Jewish superstition is that ghosts haunt these waters. So the disciples said, that's a what? That's a ghost. Oh, sweet Jesus! I'm so sorry, guys. I'm not sorry. Where are you okay? It's okay. He said, it's a ghost. Oh, my God. And Jesus said to Peter, it's me. And the Lord Peter said, if that's you, call me out on the water. Oh, my God. Say that with me. Jesus, if that's you, call me out on the water. Peter's walking on the water, and all of a sudden the winds and the waves are picking up, and everything is crashing down, and he begins to sing, and he cries out, Jesus, save me. You're sitting here this morning because it feels like you're sinking. You're discouraged. Save me, Jesus. And you know what Jesus does? The most encouraging thing he can do to you. He rebukes you. He picks Peter up by his hands. And you know what he tells him? Oh, you have little faith. Why do you love me? But if you're taking notes to your right side, I'm going to write for you. 
Jesus' rebuke is your encouragement. My God. Because it's better translated as this. Peter, why do you doubt that I will empower you to be just like me? Do not doubt that I will empower you to be just like me. What you see me do, that is what you will do. If you see what I see, you'll do what I do, and nothing will be impossible for you because you believe. My God. Why does Peter want to walk on the water? Peter wants to walk on the water because Peter is a what? A what? A disciple. A disciple is what? Imitates Christ. So Jesus, if you're walking on the water, call me out. Say it with me, Jesus, if that's you on the water, call me out. Because I'm a disciple. If you see him healing the sick, you can heal the sick. If you see him cast out demons, you can cast out demons. If you see him prophesying, you can prophesy. If you see him raising the dead, you can raise the dead. What you see him doing, that you can do. I will empower you. Do not doubt. I will empower you. Fast forward so we can get through this thing. Say, I'm a disciple. disciple. That's in praying. In Luke chapter 4, verse 4, it says, The evening was coming, the sun was setting, and they brought to Jesus all who was sick, and demonized and paralyzed, lame, maimed, mute, blind, could not speak, deaf, dumb, and he healed them all. I'm going to say, Heal them all. In Acts chapter 5, somebody else comes walking down, and they said, We need to go and bring the paralyzed, the mute, the dead, the lame, the blind, the deaf, the dumb. And bring him to him, and guess who it was? It was Jesus. It was Peter. And it says that his shadow just touched them. And they were healed. And it says they were all healed. Remember, no student is above his master. But when he's fully trained, he will be just like him. Peter was fully trained. Because what Jesus did in Luke 440, Peter does in Acts chapter 5. My God. And when Jesus healed all the sick, so did Peter heal all the sick. Sorry, I'm not going to you guys. It's right here. It's kind of holy ghost. I prayed for countless people over the years following God. And thousands for healed and thousands for not. Simply because I'm a disciple in training, I'm not yet fully trained. I lay hands on the sick, I lay hands on the dead, I lay hands on the blind. And I've seen a lot of things happen. But I've also not seen a lot of things happen. But I'm a disciple. Freely give it away. This is a command. The third thing you need to know about the disciple number one is chosen. Number two, your priorities to fall to become. And number three, it's obedience. Healing the sick is obedience. Casting out demons is obedience. Raising the dead is obedience. Preaching the gospel is obedience. Getting through the Holy Spirit and filling the others with the Holy Spirit is obedience. Water baptizing others to Jesus is obedience. It's a call. Of Jesus and call of Jesus. Right now, if you're to measure your commitment to God, through healing the sick, casting out demons, preaching the gospel, baptizing me, how committed are you? If you're to measure your commitment as a disciple following Jesus, how committed are you? Who in here is healing the sick? Just be honest. Who's casting out demons? Who's raising the dead? Who's preaching the gospel? Who's baptizing the people in water and filling them with the Holy Spirit? Who's calling them to Jesus? You say, oh, I pray, and this is what they say, prayer. Awesome, but there's more. Because if you want to make a disciple, you got to drop a hook. Well, how's your day going? Well, I'm not going to stay. We'll drop a bait for everything else to get healed. Okay, they got healed. We get into you. Okay, they give up. Jesus, what next? Acts 2 3, repent, be baptized, and receive the Holy Spirit. Well, I don't know, I don't know, that's a command. 
on the water, provoke them to a godly jealousy that they would desire you and walk after your commands. What you have given to us as a disciple, because we love you, we will obey your commands in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. 
um, these are the awkward swearing a birthday offering from Michelle Sagasan, from Alan and Alana. Uh, prayers for safe travels as Cassie travels to Hawaii from Dino, Judy, and Cassie Hernandez tomorrow. Prayer offering for Cassie from Dino, Judy, and Cassie um, Hernandez tomorrow. Thanksgiving offering for Andrew and Serenity, the Kilo Bound, Blessings in the Bag, and the Sharon Garashio Memorial Scholarship. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for these offerings. God, we just thank you for what it is that you're doing. And God, we thank you that some soul, some water, but you bring the increase. God, that the seed that we sow is a seed that grows. You're the God of abundance, the God of So God, Lord, we ask that you would bring to you with two fishes or five loaves. God, we take that and make you five thousand or more. Lord, we bless it in Jesus' name. Thank you to our guest pastor, Nicola Lutis, Mrs. Zoe Lutis, and family for joining us today and for sharing the word of God. Summertime is the right time to prepare for the next school year, and so it's time for blessings in the valley. Let's help our kids be at church and in the North Shore community by donating supplies between now and July 23rd. Walmart and other stores are happy to help us. Prices are super low right now, so it's great. It's time to pick up Brand of the Father. Pencils, markers, erasers, roll paper, index cards, post-it notes, calculators, sprout notebooks, 3D ring notebooks, and backpacks. Place your supplies in the collection box located in the foyer and bring us now to our daily spaces. Mahalo for, for your donations from your church of In the calendar of events, today it was our guest pastor, Nicola Luigi's. On Tuesday, July 2nd, the Tuesday market wide lowest close this week. Next market will be on July 23rd. Wednesday, July 3rd, Bible study from 10 to 11 in the Avenue Conference Room and all are welcome to the tent. July 7th, Alta Fathers from Vicky Jamara for her birth in Miriam, for her birth in Miriam, Jamara. Guest pastors, Lauren Bucket Medeiros. The worship leaders, Mark and Impact 12, and the fellowship committee meeting in the Avenue building following the service. July 14th, the guest pastor is also Lauren Medeiros. The deacons committee meeting join the meeting in our sanctuary at 12 p.m. for after our morning service. And there's also a finance meeting. On July 21st, the beacon articles are due. This covers past events from May, June, and July, and upcoming calendar events including August, September, and October. There's also a council meeting, and the guest speaker is Brian Crowley. On July 28th, the we welcome past, oh, we welcome past EJ and Mrs. Rivers and family. Property team meeting, and there's a, on August 3rd, there is the awards of the Shane Gobash Memorial Scholarship, which will be presented a banquet to honor our recipients, held at the social hall at 10 a.m. Tickets are available for $30, and donations for staff and auction are greatly appreciated. If interested, contact Alan or Michelle Sagaisa. Are there any additional announcements? Please stand for the closing hand.
Can I have you guys come here? Come here. If you are, if you are a Gen Z, twelve to twenty-nine, why don't you make a line? Just make a line right here. Make a line right here. I want to pray a special prayer of impartation. Yeah, come make a line. Stand right here. Can you come down here? Stand right here. Yeah, but I want you to come here. Come, 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 come. Paul says that I have come, and, I, and face towards me, you can face towards me. Paul says I've come because I yearn to impart to you spiritual gifts. And he says to Timothy, he says, Timothy, fan into flames the gifting of God that was given to you through the laying on of hands. You have all the fruits of the Godhead already on the inside of you, right? But there's something special that happens when an impartation drops down in your spirit to stir up a deep desire, a deep hunger. And I simply want to pray because of calling our generation not to waste our teenage years, not to waste our youth on worthless things, but to give it over to eternity. I'm 26, so if anybody here 26, jump up on here. If you're under 29, come up on here. In the name of Jesus, I want to pray that a special prayer of impartation will touch down on your life. Because you need a radical encounter with God. It is through you and our generation that's going to turn the world upside down. So I want to come put my hand on your shoulder and just pray a prayer of blessing over you. Just real quickly here. But before I do, I want to do something. There's somebody here right now and you have been struggling with the pain right here coming across from one side of the neck to the other side of the neck. There's another person here that's kind of been having this hard time, um, almost like the hip is kind of out of Very like throbbing and, and it's been very achy. And God's going to heal that. If that's any of you, just wait at me. Just wait at me. There's somebody here, I don't know if it's like, I just saw like your jaw shifted because you had some kind of like that locked jaw or TMJ, I don't know what that is. I was just reminded of a healing that broke out that we prayed for and, some, and somebody got healed right there. And even on the right side of your face, I don't know if it's affecting your eye, the nerve in your eye. Any of these things that I'm saying just wait at me, is that you? One person, two people, three people, just wave at me. Come. Come here. If that's you, you have a hand up here, I want you to come here. Make a line straight here. Come, come quickly. Because the word of knowledge is revealed. And when God reveals it, he reveals it to you. That you didn't tell me about it. I didn't know anything about anybody here. If God reveals it, he reveals it to you. That look, if I call out any of those things that it's you, I need you to come quickly. Come quickly right here, right now. And if you've been struggling with that shoulder pain on the right side of your shoulder, thank you, Jesus, I need you to come up here quickly. Just go over there. Thank you, Jesus. JJ, can you pray for me? I'm going to pray for these guys. Everybody else, stretch your hands out towards them. My brother JJ is going to pray and command life into your bodies. He's going to ask you, 10 is the most pain, 0 is, the, is no pain. Just begin to engage the pain after Jesus prayed for you. But stretch your hands out towards our generation right here. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, let heaven touch down right now. Everyone in the congregation pray this with me. Say, Jesus, come with your Holy Spirit. Fill us up. Set us free. Fill us with fresh. Right now, that heaven would touch down on our life. In Jesus' name, I'll keep your hands stretched out towards the Father right now in the mighty name of Jesus. A fresh impartation of the fire of God that's on my life. Lord, the same way you came on my life, come upon them now, right now. Fill them up. Freedom. In Jesus' name, I break fear. Go. In the mighty name of Jesus, depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, get out. Go. In the mighty name of Jesus, I lose the fire of God all over you. A hunger, a desire, more. More, Lord Jesus, increase. 
Right now, freedom. I command every lie over your life be broken up and out in the mighty name of Jesus. The fire of God right now, touch down, heaven to touch down more, Lord Jesus. Increase, increase right now, fresh importation. Lord, to answer the call of Jesus on your life, to deepen their commitment with you, to see the sick healed, to see the demonized set free, to see the oppressed get out of their bondage. God, I thank you right now. Fresh impartation, the fire of God. More. Increase. 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 Just keep your hands stretched out towards these guys in the front. Lord, more. Come, Holy Spirit. All across this room, let heaven touch down. Move upon their hearts. Lord, wherever there is anxiety, wherever there is fear, wherever there is depression, in the name of Jesus, be exposed this morning, be made manifest this morning, and come out right now, right now, whatever it may be, whatever is hiding, whatever is holding your people back, in the name of Jesus, I command it to go. Seize power, be broken, come up and out in Jesus' name. Out of the people right now, out of our generation right now, whatever is hiding in their bodies, come out right now. Whatever lie, whatever fear, whatever trauma, whatever torment, in the name of Jesus, be broken, be broken, be broken. Holy Spirit, come with a mighty baptism. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to have my wife come and lay hands on the women right here. Everybody else, keep your hands in your heart now. As I bless you, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be so gracious and generous towards you. The light of his countenance be turned towards you. That he would give you peace. You shalom. Perfect peace, nothing lacking, nothing missing, nothing broken. Lord, bless your people from the inside out. Change their worlds upside down that they'll never be the same again. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Guys, you are blessed. I want to invite you. If there's anybody here that as we were praying, you felt something stirring up. You felt a tingling. You felt something moving. My wife and I are going to be here. My brother JJ and his wife Kiora is going to be here. And you want extended time of prayer. You want to hear from God. You want a prophetic word. We're here to prophesy over you, to pray for you. If you're struggling with any of those things, fear, depression, suicide, I want to tell you, it's from the pit of hell, and Jesus has come to set you free. We have come with the finger of God this morning, because Jesus said this, that if you want to go into the man of the strong, if you want to go into the house of the strong man, you must first bind him. And when he is bound, then he can rob his possessions. I want to tell you, the possessions of the strong man is the devil. The devil is the strong man, but his possessions is people. And we have come this morning to storm the gates of hell, to bring the people outside of the enemy's gates into the kingdom of the Son of His love, and to destroy the works of the devil. So, Father, bless your people here in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.